Today, I'm flying ultra low cost with North Atlantic Airways from Berlin, Brandenburg to New York, JFK. Is the airline any good? Does it have value for money? And what are my thoughts? Stay tuned for the review. The warmest of welcomes to Berlin, Brandenburg. A new city, a new country, and a new airport, where today I've just gotten off a train journey starting in Frankfurt, and I'm heading now upwards towards the terminals. A very warm welcome as well to Terminal 1, where I'll be flying on North Atlantic Airways' Boeing 787 to New York JFK. I'll be departing out of Terminal 1, and it's a rainy day, but also sunny, so it'll be interesting to see how the conditions develop. Now let's move inside Berlin Brandenburg, where it's much warmer. Immediately after arriving inside, we're greeted with check-in points, which range from 0 to 9 and 11 to 926. Luckily, I'll be according to this board from 11 to 16, which is directly right in front of me. Totally didn't walk all the way to make this introduction possible. Norse breaks its check-in into premium and also economy. Sadly, I got yelled at for filming this clip, so quickly fled the scene. That allows me time, though, to show you the remainder of the airport, and my god, it's stunning. This newly done terminal features beautifully exposed panels and check-in desks that all replicate each other. Incredibly high ceilings as well give the terminal a feel of being organized. Self-check-in machines are also available throughout and are very easy to navigate, although I didn't need to use one, I still had a little play around with it. There are plenty of lifts, travelators, signs, and there's lots of space for every check-in. A terminal definitely done properly, and it gets my seal of approval. I initially came from downstairs, so let's head up. Looking at the facilities from above, on the mezzanine level, you do have a Starbucks and a couple of other airline desks where you can get support, baggage services, and a whole lot more. And it's a great view as well if you're just wanting to people watch, which if you have a long layover, you certainly may enjoy. The self-check-in machines, as you can see, are dotted throughout, and then the wood-like boxes are where the check-in desks take place and also bag drop. Let's move towards, though, one of my favourite features, the viewing terrace, which you can get in for for three euros or six euros if you're like me and get stuck in between the entrance because you had a bag you were wheeling. The bridge takes you over the duty-free and the departure gates, which I found pretty funny considering I had yet to clear security, it gave me a sneak preview of what was to come. And my oh my, this viewing deck is incredible. I'm happy I got to the airport early and was able to really soak in the view, especially before the really bad weather hit. Yes, over in the distance, you're able to see my Boeing 787 with North Atlantic Airways that'll be taking me to New York JFK later. And what a striking yet elegant livery it is. The space is almost too ample, but it does offer you a great bit of fresh air, and best of all, you can watch the planes, which if you're like me and an aviation enthusiast, you'll enjoy that. You'll definitely know what a viewing terrace means at an airport, especially when nowadays there aren't too many that still exist. It's time to head downstairs and see more self-service machines, but I do need to now move towards check-in to drop my bag and then subsequently after that head through security. So let me put my phone away, stop the recording, get all that done and meet you once I'm past security to continue this flight review. One thing evident about Berlin Brandenburg is that you need to be prepared to walk a lot. The terminal is configured so you'll always find yourself wandering the entire distance and then backtracking and doing it again. Duty free is a short walk from the security point that I went through and there's lots of flashy items available for those that may be interested in purchasing something from here. The terminal sleekness and modern yet cozy feels continues even past security and the airport features big windows throughout, which I must admit is another feature I absolutely adore in airports because there's nothing better than getting a great view of your plane parked at the gate, just like here in Berlin. Plus there's a Lego store, what's really not to love about this airport thus far? One level up is your food court area, which has multiple options, including a pizza place, Asian gourmet dining, a fish and chip shop, plus a couple of others. You know, though, what I had to go for, and that was a couple of slices of pizza from the pizza place. 
I mentioned there was a lot of walking, and here is just one example when finding your gate. Big windows do feature, as you're able to see at B5 here, and it's a common theme throughout. But with that being said, it's definitely an extensive walk if you need to get to your gate, so factor that in. I arrived at uh, a B gate, and you may be asking, is this where your flight is departing from? No, but it was where I was able to get a fantastic view of the 787, taking me through to JFK as it was pulled from the stand, and I can't wait for what's ahead. Additionally, there is a Lufthansa World Shop for those that may be interested in picking up some goodies. They do also have models. If you were to select one of the models available on your screen, which one would it be? Let me know down below in the comments. I think I'd have to go with probably the 7478 or the A380. I'm headed towards C and D gates, which means we will be going up another level and through a passport control check once more. It was evident that this space was still very much a work in progress, and the quieter side of the airport that must have been a newer part, and that was even evident when walking around and taking a look at the long corridors with shops that were mostly either closed or not fully built. You can see that the corridors just truly never end. Let's appreciate, for a moment, the Berlin Brandenburg logo. I like its simplicity. I must say, I'm a big fan of the charging stations throughout. While I wouldn't use it, it serves its purpose very well. So after a long walk and a secondary passport check, I did make it to the gate that I was going to be departing from, which was just at this point for North Atlantic. There were big windows throughout, and we were very much higher than where I was earlier, which gave me a great point of view. I was then given a COVID form regarding vaccination. I was actually surprised that of all the countries I've flown to, Going to the United States is where I would actually require this, especially when considering I had been in Australia and required nothing. Again, here's the 787. Boarding began shortly after I arrived, and it's pretty dull weather. What's fun is, though, when boarding the aircraft is you get to go down three ramps to eventually the aircraft. It's handy for the airport as it means they're able to separate gates and if you'll have a US flight with customs and so forth while also giving you fantastic views of the airfield as you're walking down, turning around, and so much more. What's even funnier is while going down this ramp, I passed the same doors that I was at only 25 minutes ago to take a look at the aircraft from the main level. It really shows you perspective on where you're going, how far you're walking, and how far you've actually made it overall. As I board this 7879, let me explore the North Streamliner with you. The aircraft can seat up to 290 passengers in two configurations, with a premium economy and an economy class present. The 56 premium economy seats are towards the front of the cabin, and then you have 200 plus economy seats towards the back end of the cabin. The airline allows you to pay more for a seat that's further up in the cabin, and today I'll be sitting in 25A, which I did pay a little bit extra for to pick my seat, but hey, I wanted a good view of the wing and to provide you with hopefully an entertaining trip report. The seats are interesting in color, not something I've experienced before, and I do like the feel of the cabin already. As the flight continues to board, it's time to, you guessed it, explore the seat. Below the IFE, which already looks very welcoming, there is a headphone jack and a USB slot. The tray table is next, which, when released, comes down very easily. It can move back, and it can also move forward. I do like a good tray table, and I found the size to be more than adequate. The seat back pocket is next, and it features a Norse Atlantic 7879 Dreamliner safety card. Again, this one probably is looking a little worse for wear. Behind that, we have the Norse Atlantic Airways menu. Now, Norse doesn't do a typical meal service. You do need to pay for your meals. You can either pay for options such as these or prior to boarding included in your ticket, you're able to purchase one or two of the routine meal services. Think of these as just snacks. When it comes to legroom, hey, for this being hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars cheaper than alternatives, it was more than adequate. As this is a Boeing 787 Dreamliner, the windows operate via a control system for the shading. Above is a fan and your reading light. 
the IFE features a lovely Northern Lights background, which immediately I really love. Now, while I'm not a user of an IFE typically, when I review the aircraft, I know that many people will be using the in-flight entertainment, so this is for you. The first thing I look for is the accessibility and also the smoothness, so what are the response times like? The reality is, once it was operational, the Norse 787 product definitely was superb, and it was one of the most responsive systems to date when it came to clicking and understanding where my touch and scroll was. It's very simple in the way it's designed, from its movies, to its TV shows, to its genres. And while I can navigate, say, more complicated systems, I will honestly admit that sometimes airlines IFEs can be a little bit too complex, and this may very well be daunting for some people that are boarding the aircraft but want to use its features. Additionally, I should mention that for a low-cost airline such as Norse Atlantic, it was only a bonus that they had a IFE to begin with. The weather is terrible, so I'm very happy that I'm inside behind the window and able to keep warm. The USB port helps definitely to charge your phone, and the settings menu is, again, very simple but effective. It's got everything you need one button away, and is presented very clearly. Before departure, we needed to be de-iced as there was a mixture of snow and rain. Let me be quiet now though, and I'll let you enjoy the departure from Berlin. The departure was interesting. We were almost squished between two layers of clouds, which presented a lovely view of the sunset, and unique for me as well when traveling. Upon rising above the clouds, it definitely became apparent that our flight would indeed be chasing the sunset for much of the journey. A peaceful prospect, providing some lovely views. Sunsets or sunrises are, for me, my favorite time to be in the air. The views are just nothing short of magical, and in my eyes, makes you realize just how lucky you are to be on board an aircraft and experiencing such a thing. As the seatbelt sign came off, meal service commenced shortly. It would be dinner, and I was actually served a meal. Shocked as I didn't realize I'd ordered one, but discovered later that I got the first meal service because of the fare type I had bought that included having a checked bag. For dinner, I selected the salmon, potatoes, and vegetables with a roll, and additionally, we had chocolate mousse with caramel for dessert. It was lovely. Plain food, in my opinion, gets a very bad rep and is underrated. It's never going to be five stars, and the sooner you realize that, the quicker you'll probably enjoy actually having it. Shortly after the meal service, LED lights came on, and it was time to grab some rest. Definitely emphasized by the fading light, as it indeed became apparent, we weren't going to be beating the sun. Shock horror there. After napping on and off and being slumped on the tray table, we actually only had 40 minutes of this flight left, and boy had it gone relatively quickly. Then again, an 8 hour journey for someone that is in Australia is not that long at all. During the approach, Norse did something I'd actually never seen before, running a rainbow stream down throughout the cabin multiple times using the LED lights. It was so lovely, and the whole plane was smiling and people were taking videos. That really summed up the flight. A fantastic experience that provided very good value for money. A cheap alternative to cross the Atlantic from Germany with good food, a more than adequate IFE, a brilliant crew, and a comfortable plane. I did love every second of it, and genuinely had no complaints. 
Like I said, for the amount of money I was paying, it was definitely worth it. And while I had to get the train to Berlin, it was an experience I'll never forget and would definitely fly North Atlantic at the next chance I had. As we approach New York, enjoy the lights and the wing of the Dreamliner. What a brilliant view. I'll now be heading to a hotel for an overnight layover before embarking tomorrow in the sequence of my travel on a Delta 767 flight. Stay tuned for that review, which will be coming to your screens very soon. As always, thank you for your support. Thank you for watching a flight review. I hope they're somewhat okay for you.